Alright, here we go. Alright, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I know y'all probably used to seeing me, the ones who be watching this anyway. I used to seeing me Sunday, which was yesterday, but, you know, <clears throat> it is what it is. Once again, we, we back again, we live. Happy Labor Day to everybody. Um, happy Labor Day to everybody, and it's... It's just with a heavy heart that I come before you today, and, and you know, you know, uh, just understanding a lot of things, and you know, it's it's different. It's a little bit different now because uh, times are changing, as we all know. Um, well, some of us know, and some of us choose either to not want to know or. Some of us just plain are not paying attention and have got so, we got so caught up in living our normal lives that even if people felt the pain or something was wrong, it's like there's so many, there's so much sin out here that you could just run to something that's not really good for you to, to quell that pain, to numb that pain. And, make it go away you know what i mean you could drink it away smoke it away you could do whatever however you choose to deal with uh the current issues or what's happening in the world now in here in the united states of america you know and i keep on asking the lord like lord you know can you give me something positive to say, something uplifting, something, you know, that will make people happy and smile, you know, because it's hard. First of all, me being a sinful man that I am, knowing that I sin every day, try my best not to, but I have good days and I have um, bad days and I have very bad days, you know, and uh, lately, everything ain't really been on the up and up as much as I would like. So, in the last word that I made, I was talking about how, you know, the Lord will chasten you, he'll chastise you and not to lose heart and not to, you know what I mean, be, be mad and run from him when you feel like you're seeking the Lord and he start correcting you and your heart starts getting a little bit troubled. Um, I told you guys that that was only for the purposes of him purifying us, meaning his saints. And I've definitely been going through that process. Some days are good. Some days are not good. Some days with the Lord, walking with him are easy. And other days are hard because unexpected things come about. You know what I'm saying? That I didn't prepare for, didn't plan for it course trying to be vigilant and watch out for the enemy but not only watching out for the enemy externally but also dealing with the things that trouble my heart and the sins that I have you know what I'm saying that I try my best to fight against on a daily basis sometimes I win those battles but a lot of times I lose all right I only started off by saying that because as a young man of God I think it's important for us to be transparent, for us to be honest, and for us to tell the truth. So first and foremost, before I communicate anything from the most high to y'all through this video, I wanted to tell y'all that and open with that so that you guys never get the preconceived notion or ever think that I'm so high up and I'm so perfect and I'm so clean and I'm so pure and I'm so much better than y'all because I'm not. I struggle with the same things you guys struggle with, and maybe even more so than, than you guys. But uh, I'm gonna sit out here for a minute and then I'm gonna go inside and we're gonna get into the word. But I came out here cause somebody's in my office at the moment. So I, like I said, I wanted to open up with that so you guys can know, okay? Now, just a little bit more about myself. 
um, me in my life because I've been coming on the live I see I see the numbers and the views they're going up a little bit which means people are paying attention but most of y'all don't know me so just about myself I'm 30 years old um, I live in Georgia feel me I've been serving the Lord for a little while the reason why I say a little while is because when I thought I was saved I thought I was saved a while back, about 10, 10 uh, 11 years ago, but I found out the opposite and quite contrary, you know what I mean? So I'm just now walking into what is really, I guess could be considered giving God your heart, feel me? I gave God my mind, but I didn't surrender my will and emotions. Like, I gave him my mind, therefore he was able to fill me up with a lot of his word. Um, back then which I know now but I didn't surrender my will and my emotions to the Lord in other words if I got angry enough I go off to the side dip from the Lord's presence hear him calling me to come back to him telling me what I was doing was not safe and yet I still continued on that path okay so that was my will his will for me was not for me to be doing none of that now there's still sin in my life and in my heart that has to get exercised so i'm still being purified now you know but the bible says you know the lord he'll he'll purify you and he'll refine you with fire okay fire in in other words is testing things that test your patience things that test your resolve things that will test your faith test your steadfastness and sometimes you'll do good and you'll excel in these trials but a lot of times you fall but as long as you hold on to the Lord by the time that thing is over you'll be strengthened and you'll be sustained even more so so you can keep going hello welcome to the room uh, it's nice to see you today happy Labor Day I don't know if you meant to send me an invite but if you uh, want to get on and say a few words to the people you can but anyway welcome to the live thank you for coming so the lord been refining me through the fire you feel me uh and it's been a it's been hard it's been trying it's been tough because like i said in one of my previous videos the hardest person to face is always yourself i don't care what nobody say it's the truth it's the truth so anyway now i'm getting to the point where i'm surrendering my will and emotions and i could tell that when you surrender god when you surrender your will to god you're saying yo i'll take i'll take what you want me to do in the place of what i would do in the place of what i could do i want to do what you should have me to do now surrendering your will that's an everyday thing but i noticed the more that i surrender my will to god the more god speaks to me and it's regardless of the situation i found that out too like regardless even if i feel like i'm at my lowest even when i feel like my sin is piled up to the sky and i'm just having the hardest days it's like as soon as i start talking as soon as i start praying in the spirit the Lord always reassures me. He's like, no matter what the situation is, I'm right here. Now, if I if I didn't surrender my will to the Lord and say, Lord, when we say, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, you're giving God permission to let his will be done in your life, okay? But the thing is, that prayer is just like a common thing. So we don't really think about it like that. But spiritually speaking, that's exactly what we're doing. So, you giving the Lord your will, it's giving the Lord permission to be in control of your actions, uh, habits, behaviors, what you do, what you choose not to do. And it's an everyday process. Sometimes I'm still hard-headed and hard-hearted, and I, I get in my own way a lot still. But I'm learning, 
with each day uh, to give it to him more and more. So with that, I start seeing good fruit in my life. I start seeing people coming to me, asking me for words of knowledge, words of wisdom, um, prayer, and asking for advice. Even asking for encouragement, you feel me? And I didn't really expect that. In the beginning, I had got an umption from the Lord that I'm going to tell y'all. Even though I wish the message was a happy one and it was an encouraging one, this is to encourage you. I just told you that I still have sin in my life. I just told you that I'm still working on me. So please, I don't want to hear anybody saying, yo, who you think you are on that video acting all self-righteous? What are you talking about? I didn't say that. I said God working on me. That's, that's it. But if you allow God to work on you, he can use you in the process. He can. So I don't want nobody looking at me like I'm some, a special person, because I'm not. I'm just a young man who's trying to live for Christ, okay? So, now, um, a, a lot of times when I was sitting alone with the Lord for the past uh, two months, when I first started this process with the Lord of, you know, Him really separating me and taking out things that don't belong, which I'm still going through, like I said, so y'all keep me in your prayers, please. I appreciate it. Pray for me as I pray for you. Uh, it was cool at first when I started doing these words on here, but after a while, it takes a toll on you to know what the Lord is saying and to know it's not so positive. You know what I'm saying it's not always so encouraging. It's not so uplifting. Sometimes it's really sad. Feel me, and when you're intimately connected with the Holy Spirit and God, if you pray on it daily or continually, you try to stay in your word, you try your best to stay in the state of worship, you'll begin to feel the same emotions that angels in heaven feel and what God in heaven feel. For instance, it could be days, and mind you, I'm talking to the bride of Christ, that's anybody who's saved. This, this word ain't for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's not going to understand. Everybody's not going to care to watch this live, but I'm not talking to you. So anyway, to the brethren, and for anybody with ears to hear and that cares to listen, this is for y'all. You know how when you praising God, you feel, you feel so intimately connected. It's like you can feel angels praising God with you. I don't know if anybody ever been in that place during worship, but I definitely have been to the point where it's so intimate, so powerful that I be getting reduced to tears and I start crying. You feel me? I start crying. And um, just the other day, when I was in praise and worship just by myself, I was just in, in my closet, chilling with the Lord. And uh, I was making melodies to the Lord, just singing psalms to him. And, and I actually got a glimpse and I was walking on the road. And I was walking on a narrow road. I don't like sharing this type of stuff. I was walking on a narrow road though. And when I was walking on the road, I noticed that I had a, I had a garment on and it was supposed to be white. I knew it was supposed to be white, but my gown was gray and it was dirty. It was dirty. Um, and I knew for a fact that that was my heavenly garment that I seen. And uh, all the more so, I saw two angels, they was walking with me and on, on my left, to my left and to my right. And uh, I looked at the condition of my garment and I was tempted to stop praising. And the Lord told me, he said, yo, he said, don't stop praising. He said, keep on praising. And know. Uh, I kept on. I didn't stop, but I was crying though. Um, Cause I knew that's how I was spiritually. And as you know, the Bible says, 
I even read it on here. The Lord is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Well, I just told you my gown was dirty. So that means if the Lord was to come back today, I wouldn't go. And I love the Lord. You know what I mean? But the thing is, you can't try to reason with God either. Like, if you have a problem with a particular sin, whatever it is, it's best to work that out with the Lord. Just take it a day at a time. He understands how difficult it is living in the flesh and body and being men and women. But that doesn't mean we're not supposed to try. That doesn't mean you just wink at your wrong and you just keep doing that. That it doesn't mean that, okay? If you wanna get to heaven, it's a process you have to undergo, I'm sorry. We can't just do what we want. And I wanna sit here and I wanna cry so bad because I know how many people are struggling with depression right now because I can feel it. It's literally mothers and fathers at home that was not expecting to lose their jobs. People who have 401ks, college plans, obtaining degrees and getting jobs and everything. And now everything is at a standstill and you was working so hard, all of a sudden everything stops short and it's, it just feels so hard. And I understand that. But at the same time, I'm gonna tell you the same thing I've been saying. It's time for people to stop focusing on time and start concerning yourself with eternity and fixing your mind on salvation, okay? So now, <clears throat> yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna get into what it is the Lord put on my heart to say. Again, not to offend anyone, not to, not for any of them reasons. Just, if I don't say it, I'm not gonna be able to go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? So there's no, there's no point in being quiet. You know what I'm saying? There's, I wouldn't serve no purpose. If I was to get on here and to think about what people had to say, whether it was positive or negative, it wouldn't even serve me a purpose because you know why? The Lord wouldn't make me, let me go to sleep and he would make me get on here and say it tomorrow. So what's the point? And mind you, this been festering in my heart for like the past three days. And I try to put it off and put it off and put it off because I wanted to test the spirit to see if it was of God or if it was just my emotions getting in the way, clouding my judgment. You know, maybe I could have just got scared for a second. But no matter what, the more and more I prayed, this feeling didn't go away. And so I just got confirmation. So I told the Lord I would be more than happy to share. So that's all I'm doing. I'm sharing. So I want to share this with you, the brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, all right, when you walk in the spirit of God, in the spirit of God, there's liberty. In the spirit of God, there's freedom, okay? And the Bible says that if you have the Holy Spirit, you're seated in heavenly places, okay? You're seated in heavenly places. It also says you're a foreigner in the land, as far as down here on the earth. So a lot of people can't even perceive that you're a child of God. Okay. Again, this is a message to the bride of Christ. Period. I'm talking to you guys. The sorrow I feel is not my own. You know what I mean? The Lord said, Him, He, the Lord, Jehovah, God, in heaven, and the angels, they are weeping. They're weeping right now for us on the earth. And I'm going to tell you why. Because no matter what God seems to try to do to get everybody's attention, and this includes me, that's why I'm so sad, people still are acting like things are going to get back to normal, and you're going to be able to go to school, you're going to be able to go to work, you're going to be able to live, exist. And, and just be and everything will be fine in just a second but that's not so 
also sorry also Lord please help me um, also I'm sorry y'all Also, a lot of people are watching the current events and you guys are Christians. You guys are Christians. I'm talking about you watching the news, you listening to the news, you following it on, uh, you watching the mainstream media, you watching TV and you watching the news and the Lord want me to know you aligning yourself with the wrong people because you judging the man by his personality, okay? And you don't have the right to judge no one. The Lord tells me to admonish everybody. And he said, it's not your job to judge the president, okay? And I'm not into politics. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not into politics. I'm not into politics, okay? But the Lord said, there are people who are Christians, and I mean true Christians and true believers, but because of the world and because of the time that we in, a lot of y'all don't even realize y'all looking at everybody and judging everybody around you because you think you walking stronger than them with the Lord. And you're looking at everybody scoffing at them saying, man, I know they not going to heaven. And he said, yo, you are the lukewarm one and you looking at everybody else including me saying yo you're not going to heaven yo to y'all Christians first of all if you ever pass judgment on anybody in authority I don't care if it's Nancy Pelosi Governor Cuomo President Trump whoever it is your job, your duty, and your responsibility as a, pro, as, a, as a Christian is to influence the world and influence your nation, your community, and your neighborhood. How do you influence them? You influence them by being a light, first of all. All you have to do is be a light. To be a light is try to help somebody. Why wouldn't I feed my neighbor if my neighbor is hungry? Why wouldn't I? give a little bit more out of my pocket if somebody calls me and tells me that they don't have it. Why wouldn't I? That type of influence is how you show that you're a true believer and you believe in righteousness. And it also says in the word, and again, this is not from me because I could care less. I'm not here to entertain you. Listen, we're supposed to love the brethren. And we're supposed to pray for people in authority. But everybody's lost in the sauce. You got lost in the sauce. So you, you forgot kind of that the Lord is your sustainer. He's your protector. He's the one who guides you. And he's the one that's supposed to be governing your life, okay? Your job is not to judge or criticize these politicians. Your job is to pray for them in the name of Jesus and you let God move and let him do what he does. But the thing is, the days that are coming, they're not good. Darkness is coming over America and I'm not telling you this. This is not gonna happen in two years. This is not gonna happen in three years. It's still you don't understand. This is coming in two months. This is coming in three months. Because the Lord said in order for him to get everybody's attention, a catastrophe has to happen. A calamity is going to have to happen because you guys keep thinking it's going to get back to normal. And it's not. So stop. Please stop what you're doing. I'm not telling you to stop your sinning and do I'm not here to judge you. I'm not God. Stop thinking in your mind. That stuff is going to get back to normal. Don't plan for normal life. Plan to survive. Plan for survival. 
And I'm not talking about getting food, water, or shelter. Because the only way you're going to survive what's coming is if you repent. The only safety that's going to be able to be found in this land is the safety that's in Jesus Christ. And now the demonic influence and the negativity is at an all-time high. And when November, when October and November get here, it's only going to get worse. It would have went a different way, you understand? If people would have stood for what was right when unjust legislation and laws was being passed and everybody wanted to be politically correct instead of doing what was morally right, if we would have stood up and said no to that, then God would have had room to pull this back. But no. I'm sorry. America is under judgment now, you guys. Right now. Today. This second. We are under judgment. And if any Christians are real and you really love the Lord, then do what I'm doing and sound the trumpet. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends. Tell your family that we are under divine judgment of God. And I don't care if you're a believer. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're a Muslim. My, my message is, yo, I offer Christ to you right now. I offer Christ to you right now. Salvation is free. Okay, anything else will cost you your life. Forgiveness is a free gift. So take it while there's still time left, okay? Okay, please, you guys, please. Because I said it in my other video, and I'm not playing. I don't care who don't take me serious. I never, ever thought I would be on Facebook doing this. I never thought I would be on any platform doing nothing like this. I just told the Lord that if he want to use me, he can. That's it. And I didn't even know he was going to do it because honestly, I thought I wasn't good enough. Because I know about the sin in my life. That's why I never got on here professing to be perfect or acting like I had my stuff together. Because I don't. And I need prayer just like y'all. So if you don't mind, can you please just say a prayer for me? Period. Say it. Just say a prayer for me. Just a quick one. You ain't even got to, you ain't got to do that. I'm not asking you to go before God and speak in tongues. Just pray for me. You know what I'm saying? I got people criticizing me on one hand and thanking me on the other. You want to thank me, but you want to criticize me. I don't care. I mean, I appreciate the well wishes and all that, but like we all Christians. And I'm telling you, I'm not telling you because that's what I think. That's what you said. You said you believe in the Lord. That's why you keep watching my videos. You said it. You said you give you gave the Lord your heart. You said you love him. You said you want to serve him, but you neglected him. And you didn't read your Bible, so you didn't think that all that stuff that comes with really serving the Lord came with it. Serving the Lord comes with sacrifice. <laughs> and I gave up everything. Just so I could have an opportunity to speak to y'all for one second, I gave up everything. I ain't really have no life like that. You feel me? I gave that stuff up. Because I know going to heaven is way more important than anything I would want to do. So instead of just doing what I wanted to do, I dedicated my life to serving others. Whether it was my parents, my family, my friends, or even my enemies. It doesn't matter. And none of y'all can give me a pat on the back for that. Because number one, I don't want it. Number two, my reward is in heaven. If I make it. Notice I said if. I didn't say when. How are you so sure you're going to get to heaven, bro? That's what I want to ask. And you ain't got to answer this in the comments. Just think about it yourself. How are you so sure that if the trumpet blows right now, how are you so sure that me or anybody else is even going up there? Do you know how filthy and wicked and sinful we are? Do you know? 
I hurt so many people in my life. If I tried to, I couldn't even count. And that includes my family, yo. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Whether it was on purpose or by accident and I didn't even know I did, I did it. So what make me worthy? Nothing. So what makes you, what makes you, Mr. Christian, Mrs. Christian, big and bad enough to, to condemn somebody else and tell them they're not going to make it into heaven? Are you going? Not with that attitude. What are you doing? Okay, one more thing. I'm going to hammer it home. I said this already. A lot of y'all are on the wrong side of the line. You don't stand with Biden. You don't stand with Trump. You stand with God. You stand with God because the government rests on his shoulders. You understand me? You want to turn the tide of America. You want everything to go back to normal? You realize something isn't right? Okay, well stand with me and pray with me because that's the only way. And it's not nothing new. This, oh, what happened when Israel was getting judged? Every single time. Just look, all you gotta do is read the Old Testament. Every time they started praying, God repented, okay? He changed his mind. He changed his mind. Is there still time for the tide to turn? Me? I think it's too late. But unfortunately, I also know that we're not prepared. We're not ready to see the Lord. If you lost everything today, if you lost everything, your TV, your house, your car, would you still say hallelujah? If you lost everything, all your money, all your possessions, everything you cherish, everything you love, if you lost it all today, could you still say with total confidence and assurance, Jesus, it doesn't matter, my heart belongs to you. Not these things. Everybody is preparing to, see, to, to receive the world. Like, the world is passing away. And everything around it, everything in it is passing away. You're going to have to leave this stuff alone. I'm sorry, you're going to have to walk away from this stuff. The idea that you have that everything is going to get back to normal. Do not be deceived. Nothing is normal and things have not been normal for a long time. We are in the last days. The last days. And again, I'm 30 years old. So if I feel it in my heart as much as, 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 much as I do, I know you feel it too. You feel it too. You know. What I'm gonna get on here in life for? What do I, what do I, tell me, what do I have to gain from getting on here and lying to you? A like? A comment? A share? So what's the point of that? Let me ask you again if you don't believe what I'm saying. How many of your friends do you know that's encouraging you to repent? Because if your friends was really Christians, they would be telling you to get right with God and do it now. They will be telling you, get right with God and do it right now. They will tell you, don't wait. Don't wait. Now is the time. Today is the day. Today. I'm not perfect. I just said, pray for me. I'm not perfect either. But where is your heart at? It's in my heart to serve the Lord. Unfortunately, I'm confined to this body. And I'm in a place full of sin and evil. That doesn't mean I have to continually practice that. I'm proud of the accomplishments I've made in my life and the strides that I've made as a young man to be an independent person and most importantly, an independent thinker and have in my own mind. But the Lord is the one who granted me the liberty and this level of intelligence to be able to think for myself and have my own mind. I'm thankful for legs and I'm thankful that I could walk, but the Lord healed my body before I could even walk. So that's not even my, my glory. That's not even my credit. 
I can't take credit for anything that I'm saying, no matter how persuasive my words are, because this all came from the Bible. So who am I? But everybody's waiting for the trumpet. The trumpet is here. It's in your mouth. You have the word of God in your mouth, right? That's a trumpet. You're supposed to be calling people to repentance. If you really, really love people, you're going to tell them, look, man, I'm not perfect, but Jesus is on the way, bro. And I don't care. Don't don't fall for the stu stupid opinion. Like, oh, people been saying that forever and nothing happened yet. Oh, bro, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's all around you. You just can't feel it. You just can't touch it. You just can't see it. You just can't taste it. But you can see the wind blow. You can feel the air on you and you don't see air, do you? Unless you see the trees rustling, you don't even know the wind is blowing. Amen? Stuff is changing. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, but fortunately enough, more and more believers, such as myself, are waking up to the facts. And we know what it is. So I'm sounding the alarm and blowing the trumpet and telling everybody, get right now, please. God, he, he don't want nobody to perish. And mainstream media, whether it's music or television or radio, is going to tell you everything contrary to that opinion. But I don't care about popular opinion because I never wanted to be popular. I just wanted to tell my story. That's it. So here's my story. Christ is coming back. Get right now. He's on the way. Thank y'all for the ones who tuned in and who listened. That message was very heavy, so I'm sorry for any pauses or any lapses in my sentences or um, maybe stumbling over my words, getting a little bit teary out and um, getting off track a little bit. But like I said, it's heavy. But if, if people was really in the truth, they would be telling you the same thing. What do you care if somebody calls you crazy because you say you believe in Christ? What do you care? Why does that embarrass you? Before I get off, why should I be embarrassed for telling people to believe? Why should I ever be embarrassed for telling people that Jesus Christ is real, that he's the way, that he's the truth, that he's the life? So anybody that might be embarrassed of me, watching me do what I do on this live stream, yo, you can just, you don't have to be around me. You don't have to partake. You don't have to listen. But don't be stupid. Don't be dumb. You know your mama raised you better than that. I know for a fact half of y'all snickering and giggling and watching my videos and scoffing. I know y'all went to Sunday school. I know you went to church. I know you know better than that. I know you know God is real. And I don't care what sin is in your life. The Lord will help you get yourself together. He will help you get yourself together. You don't have to do it by yourself. You don't. And you got me as a partner to assist you. I don't care if you a woman, a man, a boy, or a girl. I will help you. And, and there you go. I'm not perfect either. So there you go. So there you go. That's fire. Knowing that we both, we all need work and that we're not perfect. But if we come together as a collective, we can help one another. Because we're supposed to be washing each other's feet anyway. All right? So it's just time come out of materialism as far as money goes money ain't nothing wealth is fleeting and beauty fades even if I live 50 more years I know my skin look nice right now eventually I'm gonna get wrinkles eventually I'm gonna get gross feet we can't fight time time is gonna pass you don't wanna go you don't wanna die and the next thing you know you thought you had the Lord, and then your life review comes up, and the Lord says, you didn't worship me, you worship this. And the whole time you thought you were straight. Because, unfortunately, a lot of the pastors that we trusted, and a lot of the pastors that we've grown to love, have lied. They offered us a false gospel of grace. 
They said, oh, grace, grace, God give us grace, the dispensation of grace. The dispensation of grace doesn't give us permission to do what we want. Grace is there to help you stop doing the things that are harmful for you. It's not there so we can keep doing it. Case in point, I have a little issue with tobacco and cigarettes. Grace is not there so I can keep smoking. Grace is there so I can gradually stop. Okay? Okay? That's an example from me to you, from my life, straight to your life. I'm a sinner, saved by grace. But grace is here to build me. Sin is there to break you. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm broken, but I'm healed because I can talk about it. So again, I'm not trying to castigate anybody. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm not here to criticize. I'm not even here to complain. I'm not here to champion a movement and scream Black Lives Matter because if Jesus does not matter, black lives don't matter. If Jesus doesn't matter, white lives don't matter. If Jesus doesn't matter, nothing else matters because he made it all. He made it all and he made us so that we could be together not a part so anybody who identifies with that movement you fueling separation you fueling it you causing division you need to stop do you even know what you aligning yourself with before you align yourself with black lives matter and this is coming from a young black man make sure you know what that movement is all about because they're all about removing the father from the home removing the patriarchal structure from the home, removing the father from the home. And where the father is not at, there's no order. That's why the whole earth is in disorder because we don't have the father. You understand? So no matter how hard it is, I want y'all to be encouraged, especially the young believers my age. Stay in your Bible as much as you can and try your best to be a light to your family and your friends, okay? And no matter how hard it gets, it's okay because Jesus is coming back. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, I said God on the way. And if they have a problem with that, you can refer them to me. I'll help them out. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for giving me the energy, giving me the option, giving me a mouth to speak. Arming me with eyes to see and ears to hear. I help. I pray, Heavenly Father, first of all, that you would help me to repent of all my sins and to confess those openly and willingly to you. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to arm us with your love, arm us with your light, and fill us with your word, because in your word there's life. And you took the keys of death and hell, Heavenly Father, and you redeemed us all. I thank you for what you did on the cross right now. And I thank you for anybody who brought, has brought to um, salvation into the kingdom of God and to repentance through these messages. And no matter how heavy they are, dear Lord, I know you'll help me to carry them out. So let your will be done and not my own. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, everybody, it's time for me to get back to work. I have to go. It was nice chilling with you guys. And um, y'all all be blessed in the name of Jesus. And no matter what happens... As long as you got Christ on your team, it'll be all right. It will be all right. And I don't care. One more word. Yo, I don't care if the church is closed. You praise God like never before. Watch him show up wherever you at. All right. I love y'all. God First Entertainment, we in the building. Make sure y'all like, share, comment if it's on your heart to do so. And also, if you want to see more of these excellent videos, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. G1 TV. Uh, the cross and the crown is a logo and it's gold. So go ahead, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? And hit that notification bell so you can be updated on all the newest and truest content. All right. We love you with the love of the Lord over here. All right. Y'all have a good evening, man. Happy Memorial Day to you. God bless America.